Hey guys, and thanks for joining us this week uh, for the new Tuesday Truth. And we're in a series called Spiritual Royale where we've been looking at the armor of God. And today we'll actually be wrapping up the series. This is the final one in our series where we've been talking about this spiritual battle, um, the spiritual royale that we face as people in this crazy world. Um, we've been looking at the pieces of armor and we've been that we've been given um, when we are our children of the living God. And we also looked at each individual piece. Um, and not only that, we, we realized that there are pieces of armor that are given to us that are kind of default um, by being Christian and in God's family. But there are also pieces of armor that the Apostle Paul tells us that we need to actually pick up and use to our advantage. Uh, last week, Alicia took us through the offensive weapon. And that is the sword of the Spirit, you know, being God's word that can be used to combat anything we might face and every lie that tries to infiltrate our hearts and minds or a truth that is bent that tries to deceive us. Finally, Paul's instruction then to the Ephesians is this week is in Ephesians 6, 18, and it says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. This instruction is so incredibly important and guides us in the sense of who we are and what we are dependent on in getting through the everyday things of life. The foundation of the armor is birthed in prayer. You cannot have the armor without having a robust prayer life. They're not mutually exclusive. To have a knowledge and the tools are only half of the battle. You could have the most high-tech equipment, the most modern weapons, but if there's no fuel to power them, then all they really are is scrap metal. But why do we pray? You know, that's, a, that's a really big question. Why do we pray? Well, like I explained a few uh, Fridays ago at one of our talks, is do you consider someone who is a rando on your Insta account a best friend, right? You know, I surely know. They, they don't know you and only maybe know a little bit about you in the images that you maybe post or the videos that you that you post. If you have close friends, then then you know that you can trust them. Um, you've lived a life together. There's relationship there. You've been through hurt together, partied and celebrated together. That is a deep relationship that can only happen when we spend time with that person. You know that friend, you know that one in their in their family that can just come visit any time. That just comes, walks in, opens your fridge, grabs something to eat, something to drink, and comes and sits down on your couch. Or maybe you're that person to someone else. You know, it's you feel so at home in the other person's home. Likewise, we cannot have a relationship with God unless we spend time with Him. Prayer, at its core definition, is actually talking to God. Not some weird or religiously loaded word or an idea which might have some strange connotations to us as being anything more than what it really is, and that is talking to God, talking with your God, your King, and your Father. Talking to God allows us to bring our heart before Him, to be incredibly personal and tell Him what we think and feel, just like we would our closest friend or family member. You know, we grow closer to God as we invest time in reading His Word because it reveals who He is and part of His, part of His character and gets to share in our lives as we kind of navigate through our own issues and problems and we openly come before Him in those things. To merely have the knowledge and try and make sense, uh, make use of the things of God means that we want the blessings of God, right? And we want to use God's power in our lives, but ultimately we don't actually want God himself. What is your idea of prayer? Is God our supernatural vending machine where we do all the right things and then demand our wishes and desires and, and, and they must just be given to us? That is not a relationship. That is a transaction. That is not love. That is using him to get what we want. James the Apostle hits us right in the fields when he, he says this in James 4, 2-3. He says, you do not have because you do not ask. And when you do ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motivations. You ask so that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. You see, we, we want to have all the good things, but we don't want them for God's sake. We don't want them for the good of other people, but we want them for our own selfish pride and greed. Being in prayer brings the word of God to life in us and makes the armor of God so much more meaningful 
as we realize that he gives us these things, not merely so we can survive in this crazy world, but so that we can have a life, a life that he calls abundance, in knowing him personally and intimately. That's what life truly is about. When you know that someone loves you so much that they gave their life for you, in despite of all you've done, thought, felt, or experienced, that they give you wisdom and life at their expense, it cannot result in anything but gratitude, or at least a want to love in return. When we really understand this, it demands a response from us. We either accept it, throw it away, but we have to make a choice. When the reality of who God is, what he has done and continues to do for us is realized, then all the armors of God become a weapon so powerful that it protects us not merely in protecting ourselves, but also in loving God and those around us with a genuine desire to share this message and the wisdom that God gives us in it. When we realize that so much has been done for us, then the problem of our lives becomes slightly dimmer as we look to help others who are suffering around us, where we do not become the key players or make our entire lives revolve around the things that are happening to us. You see, when our vertical relationship, that relationship with God, is real and healthy, then all our situations and our relationships on this horizontal plane flourish. They don't just go away or become easy, but they become manageable in regards to our lives. We wish to follow God as his command is to the Israelites, be holy for the Lord your God is holy. We want to be like him, not merely because he commands us to do so, but because we want to. Our want to obey God and be like him really impacts our lives in so many areas. Because if we want to be like him, then we, we look towards purity. We look towards like, like having the, the right attitude to what God says around sexuality and who we are, that our identity is not wrapped up in our sexuality, that we're able to keep our purity. The next thing is that we're able to have integrity, the way we treat others, the way we deal with money, the way that we deal with people in situations. We have integrity. We are trustworthy. We have a willingness, thirdly, to sacrifice. We don't just think about ourselves, but we are willing to, to let go of some things, even if we are slightly less comfortable knowing that others have an advantage and that others can actually survive. We also, we get to better study and read the scripture for ourselves. We, we, we develop a want to worship God in our own capacity, both at home, in, in the secret place, in the quiet, alone, but also in community. As we gather on Friday nights, as we gather and sing and talk together for the glory of God, it's something that we want to do. And that then builds better relationships with the, our brothers and sisters in Christ. It impacts every area, you see, because prayer is the backbone of our faith. Without it, there is no relationship with God. It's one thing to hear and know what the gospel is, but it's also another thing to interact with it. We know that the word of God is live and breathing and active. It is not merely some story that's a throwaway to look back on every now and again, but it's something that is in our lives every single day and helps us live our lives and interact with God and one another every single day. Knowledge without relationship is no Christianity at all. Saying that there is a God and is good, but doesn't make you part of the family. And I, and I said this also in, in the previous talk we had. You know, in James it says that you believe that there is one God. Good. Because even the demons believe that and shudder. You see, we need to be so careful because just to know that God exists or have an inkling of that knowledge doesn't make us part of his family. Knowing God and being intimate as a family member is what matters. Therefore, to make use of the full armor of God, we need to pray to God on all occasions, Paul tells us, good or bad. Knowing that God is in fact sovereign, we can live as Paul instructs us to. And he even tells the Philippians in the book of Philippians, he says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. You see, we are able to then depend on God, knowing that he alone is our protection and our salvation, having faith that he can work in our lives, but also to trust him enough that even if he doesn't give us exactly what we're asking for, that we believe that he is sovereign and good enough that he is working things out for his glory and for our good, allowing us to pray for not only ourselves, but one another as Paul encouraged us to do so in this key scripture we read earlier. 
this is a major hurdle in our personal relationship with Jesus, right? Because is God God or are we the gods of our own lives? Are you still the master of your own ship and the captain of your own destiny? You cannot give God merely small pieces of your life. And I realized in my life I did this. There's certain aspects of my life that I would give to Jesus and say, Lord, you tell me how, guide me. But there are certain things that I hold to and say, Lord, well, you can have most of me, but these certain areas you cannot touch. He gave his whole life in our place, not just elements of himself, but his whole self. He had given up his relationship with the Father to come down here and experience the brokenness of this world and then be punished and executed in our place. He is there to reconcile us to God the Father and bring us in right standing with God so that we may have this personal relationship in being able to pray to God. Jesus broke the seal that hindered us from being able to speak to God and be in his presence. He restored our relationship so that we can indeed pray. When Jesus even speaks to the Samaritan woman in the Gospels, and when he calls her out on the things that she's been doing and the ways she's been living, he, he calls her out but in a loving way. And when he speaks about what worship looks like, you know, because Judah and Israel were separated in north and south kingdoms, and Judah believed that, you know, their place of worship was right, and Israel believed that their place of worship is right, and they had this fight between the temple that was originally built and where they wanted to worship. And Jesus says to her, she says, he says, yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. He was saying that there was no building or special temple made by man that would be a place where God would meet with his people. Yes, in the days of old, they were a foreshadowing and a symbol, but Jesus was the, was the fulfillment of that, that Jesus came and took the place and allowed us, had given us this opportunity now that we don't need to go to a place to worship God, but we are allowed to just speak to God and be in his presence instantaneously. That is amazing, and I don't think we really think through that very often. Praying is through our spirit to God. And the truth is God's word, the Bible. So some tips for us. I think we need to be more intentional. I know I'm not. Some weeks I struggle to spend time with the Lord, but I know the, how important it is. And if I don't intentionally put down time with God, I tend to forget or get too busy with everyday life. So be intentional with setting some time, time apart to just spend with God. Secondly, pray through the Bible as you read it so you can keep your focus. I know sometimes I have a hard time in staying focused. I pray for my family and my friends and usually a lot of physical aspects of life. But how much do we ever pray spiritual things or speak over our friends and pray for them and their well-being and, and their spiritual health? So being able to follow through a book in the Bible and pray those truths out is a, an amazing way to pray. You could join a friend in prayer. Having someone to pray with is really helpful and you could learn from one another as you just bring your your petitions to God. And then finally, pray until you pray. It's so easy sometimes to get distracted. If you're anything like me, you're like, oh Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful day. Oh, what am I going to do this afternoon? When am I going to take time out to go and do the admin I need to do? Oh wait, and Lord, thank you for, you know, like you just completely get disrupted in, in what it is that you're trying to do. But pray until you pray. Don't give up. Keep pressing in. And we hope that this series has, has moved you and given you insight into the armor of God and, and who God calls us to be and how this armor can be used in our lives as children of the living God. There's an amazing guide to praying the Lord's Prayer that I will add to this video. And you can either check it down at the bottom or click on the link. And I really pray it's John Piper from Desiring God just taking us through how to pray through the Lord's Prayer that we see Jesus pray in giving the disciples direction for prayer. So I pray that that is a blessing to you. Just thank you guys for watching and, and really hope that this series has been life-giving into your lives as you continue to just look towards God, to just look towards truth. <laughs>